Hi and welcome everybody. We are back with another interview. This is the Drop Holster Podcast and I'm Tom, your host. And today we have the very, 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 very pleasant and pleasureful experience of Hannah Gillingham. Hannah, how are you doing? I am good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I feel like it's a long time coming, so thanks. It, it, it has been. I mean, we've been talking some time. You have been on for uh, different occasions here and there. For uh, I think we had we had you on for a multiple poster one, uh, right? Like a, like a show, yeah. like a group show. Yeah, it was Eileen's um, Female Gaze Project. I feel exactly. That must have been years ago now. I, I don't yeah, want to think last which year, year it was. It was last year, but I'm not sure. Oh, no, I think. Was it early no, last year? No, she's done one since. She did on the sheet um, oh, yeah, more true. recently, yeah. So it's been a minute for sure, but but you have been on also for a uh, for a solo one for one of your single pieces, right? That we had like, uh, or am I mixing this up? I feel like we we had it scheduled, and I may have got COVID, oh, <laughs> and then it yeah. might have not happened. But I'm here now. You're here now. That's what all that counts exactly. And uh, yeah, we will uh, start the show obviously with what. Oh no, I I was literally thinking about this the other day. I've this completely forgotten. Speed round, the speed round, obviously. Oh god, I forgot about this. <laughs> okay. Okay, but it's gonna be fine. You, you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start out easy. And uh, I hope you're ready, but here's the first one. Favorite color. Oh, purple. Purple, okay. Nice choice. Uh what's your favorite director or directress? Um Oh God, I don't know. What, um, what is in your mind? The first one that came into my head was um, going to Stanley Kubrick. Okay, yeah, perfect. <laughs> are you asking? Are you asking or telling? <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what is your go-to food? Oh, chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Okay. And what is your go-to cinema snack? Popcorn, sweet. All right. Uh, favorite cinema? There's not many to choose around me, so I, I I don't know. But you got one where you always go like this is this is my home, my, my resident cinema. Yeah, I've got my local view. It right. does the job. <laughs> <laughs> but is, is there a cinema you actually really want to go to, like in the world, anything? Um, I'd like to go to the BFI and you haven't check been? that out. Okay. I haven't been. No, I need to. Okay, it's on the list. <laughs> So unless, I have. Uh, I remember when I was uh, there uh, oh, a while, while back. Uh, I think it was before COVID. I think 2019. I was there, and uh, since I was working, because because the BFI is also part of the AMC group, I think, as as in, oh, okay. in the UK. And so the the cinemas here, they have they are part of the the the, the chain I'm working with. Uh, they are uh, also AMC a family. And so when I went there, I was like, Hey, I also work in cinema. I told her what I do. And then I got a little tour of the IMAX there. So it was really nice. Oh, and nice. Like she told me all the nice stories about like every time uh, Nolan comes around and basically he, he has his favorite. He, and I asked like, which, where is he sitting? So, and then he's, she told me where he's sitting in the BFI for the sound check. Is that your new fi favorite seat now? Uh, of course, of course, of course. Since, <laughs> since I know also in, 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 in the IMAX here in Berlin, um, I, I, uh, asked, uh, the, technician the, the actual imax technician where he was sitting when he was calibrating everything oh, so nice. that's the seat to go but i'm not going to give it away for the people here bro. <laughs> <laughs> i'll ask you afterwards yes yes um portrait or landscape portrait all right um, that was tight actually i don't know maybe both can i say both sure sure take it take it <laughs> um we, we will check that with your work that you've done is the landscape, <laughs> is the portrait enough? <laughs> um, favorite holiday destination? I don't really, I haven't been on holiday in ages, but I'd love to go Ireland. I've got family over there. I need to go back. All right, all right. Uh, do you have a favorite animal? Cats. Cats. Okay, I, th I thought you were going to go exotic. Or is, is it, no. do we include every cat? <laughs> then it's no, um, my cat. All right, cool. Uh, what's the name? Ziggy. Ah. She's got a broken tail, so it's oh. like a zigzag. So that's ah. hence the name Ziggy. Ah, okay. Not, it. it's not. Yeah, it's not a Bowie reference. No. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, what song is on heavy rotation right now? Um, can I check? 
Is sure, that cheating? Sure. No, 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 no. It's just remembering, but it's Taylor Swift. I think it actually the might be. <laughs> no, it's actually Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles. Oh, okay. I can't stop listening to that one. Interesting, interesting choices. Um, <laughs> and uh, last but not least, what is uh, or what would be the job you would do if you were not an artist? Um, well, it still had to be something creative. I got asked this um, a while ago and I couldn't think of anything because if I wasn't being doing what I'm doing now, I, I'm stuck. I don't know. But, but I think it would have to be like graphic design and film, like uh -huh, creating all the props. Uh -huh. Okay, but... It's still kind of artistic. Yeah, but. yeah. Uh, but <laughs> if you want to be artistic, I mean, there, there could be uh, a, a, a baker person. A baker person? Yeah, I don't know. You fancy um, cakes. I'm not... And stuff like that. That's yeah, art. I could be good at decorating the cakes. Yeah, Probably not making them. Well, you know, no. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> That's it. You survived the speed round. Cool. It wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> no. Oh, there, you go, there you go. It was. It was doable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, then uh, let's uh, talk about uh, where you started out, as we always do in the beginning. We go a little chronologically, as always. And uh, where does the art come from? Where is the mind? Where was it schooled and uh, taught all mm -hmm. about the great art you're doing? Well, it all started back when I was at school, like as in secondary school. Mm -hmm. So... I've always wanted, it's, it's very like a typical artist story. I've always wanted to be an artist. I didn't necessarily know mm. like what that looked like. I didn't even know what illustration was when I first like started visualizing what my future looked like. Mm. Is it, um, I, you, you sent some images over, obviously. I'm sorry that I interrupt you here, but uh, you sent some images over. No, okay. Do we start with that, with the bedroom studio? Is that like from the beginning? Yeah, go for it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, go for it. So these are <laughs> these are really old. These are probably from like GCSE A level mm -hmm. um, times. So I literally I was just on the floor in my bedroom, uh, putting up like canvases and boards against the radiator if it was too big for my desk. <laughs> um, spent a lot of hours painting in that room. Did, did did you did your parents or did you never think about getting a easel or something? Um. I, I got one eventually, <laughs> I got okay, one okay, eventually. Okay. <laughs> but um, I don't think I had the space for it at the time because hmm. this is all in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I think university that I, hmm. I, I was lucky enough to get gifted a really nice easel for my birthday. Ah. And I still have that now. It's not in my studio because as you can see, I'm in a loft. Yeah. So it's too, it's the easel is too high. Hmm. So I've got it downstairs in another room ah, um it's the conservatory actually so it's like the perfect lighting for painting but yeah yeah i do have a an ah, easel i see i see and is the um yeah. the, the 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 um like your your artwork the, was it more of a passion hobby side or was it also and like did, did school had something to do with that in, in that kind of way as well um like did they give you tasks definitely, these tasks you had to do Alice in Wonderland here for example I think it is right yeah so that I think that was um on one of my A-level courses okay. so um I did A-level photography and A-level well it was actually B-tech art mm -hmm. so it covered like everything it covered photography painting mm -hmm. graphic design textiles you name it ceramics even mm -hmm. um but I think that specific project was creating artwork from like a po either a poster or mm -hmm. a, something inspired by a film. I can't remember exactly. It was quite a while ago, but um, I just jumped straight into Alice in Wonderland. And yeah, I don't know what exactly I was trying to achieve with that piece. <laughs> it looks quite like psychedelic. Yeah. I mean, you got um, the, you got the book there with all the psychedelic stuff, right? Or what was that? In the, in the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that would have been a, a school project, but outside of school I, all I was doing was drawing like mm. I'd come home and I'd be in my bedroom just sketching away like random mm. random stuff um mainly people yeah and when did the um love for film come in in that regard um I think I've always loved film I think it took me 
it really like started to like kick off and I noticed like how much I was into it when I was at uni. Mm. Um, cause I started paying more attention to some of the like classics, like, and got introduced to, um, more well-known films. Mm. Um, but it took me ages to kind of like make the connection between film and art. Yeah. Um, not, it seems like an obvious, um, combination now. Um, but yeah, once I realized that I could merge my love for film and art, it was like the dream, the dream combo. Mm. Because like for me, film is like very closely underneath my love for art and illustration. Yeah. So yeah. I see. I see. And, uh, in university, how was this, uh, Was there like any courses that you took in, in, in that regard or um, how, how was that? So my work from like school and uni um, was very different to what I do now. I actually didn't even, I didn't really work digitally at uni. It wasn't until after university oh, okay. I started digital art. Did they stop that? Um, like did they like did they say basically, oh, no, no, you got to do it all analog or was it like no encouragement um, in that regard or how was it? There were certain, like, it was very, it was quite a broad course. I studied illustration and visual communication mm. um, at the University of Westminster in London. And it was really good. Like, I'm, I'm really happy with my experience. I met loads of lovely people, learned quite a lot. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily, necessarily like pushed or not pushed mm. because that uh, there was like people doing all sorts of stuff. There was definitely some digital artists on my course, mm. but I just didn't seem, <laughs> I don't know. I think I had it in me, the idea of that I wanted to create everything by hand. I mm. wanted to like draw it all myself. And I think I just didn't know anything or much about digital art mm. at that mm. point. It wasn't until like afterwards they were like, Oh, by the way, digital art is coming in. And <laughs> you like, if you want a job, you probably should do digital art. And I was like, Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me know so earlier. I, like, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up picking it up at, and and it was actually my first um like full-time job outside of uni mm -hmm. that I learned like the majority of my digital art skills and like how to mm -hmm. use Photoshop and stuff like that. How was this uh, change uh, from uh, analog to digital for you? It was like was how does it feel as an as a as an artist because I don't want to knock obviously digital artists in, in that kind of way though. I hope it doesn't come across for, for everybody out there like that. But, um, was it like, you know, was it hard or was it easier in terms of, you know, doing this kind of work or, uh, did you feel like, Oh, I, I'm a, I'm a classical trained, uh, uh artist <laughs> and, uh, all this new kid stuff. Like, like how, how was that? I think, um, to start with, I, I felt very lost. Like I started off on an iPad. Um, when the iPad pro first came out, mm. I like grabbed it with my student loan and like was basically experimenting with it. And at first it did feel like I didn't like it because I don't know if you've ever drawn on the iPad, um, just straight with no like, mm. um, extra surface or protector on it. It is very, it's, you can't really compare it to like yeah. drawing on, um, on paper. So I, I was a bit put off at first, Isn't but, it, um, as I started to learn is, more and learn how I could recreate, sorry, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> how I, I could like it. learn. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. Cause yeah, no, it's as I like learn tips on like how to kind of recreate some of the things I like about traditional mm -hmm. digitally, it kind of made the, the change better. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like yeah. the easier. But, yeah, I don't know how to work. Yeah, yeah. And and is that like because I could imagine like uh, since it's like a, they call it the Apple Pencil and like if you do like uh, like sketches and like you know uh, uh, um, graphite kind of work is is that very similar then at least or how is that? Um, it wasn't to start with, but now I've kind of because like, I've got like a a paper like protector on my iPad. Mm. So you, you kind of get a similar feeling. Mm -hmm. I think drawing line work on an iPad mm -hmm. is closer to working in the sketchbook than it is on like my Cintiq here. Oh, okay. Um, I tend not to do line work on that. I tend to do it either on my iPad or mm -hmm. more recently I do it by hand because I, I, I just love drawing 
um, in, with pencil in, in my sketchbook mm. by hand. Mm. Like, it, no matter how many like little tricks and things I try to like recreate that gen- genuine feeling, I just can't. Mm. So I don't think it can be topped. So, so are you like the Chris Kohler type uh, uh, when it comes to sketchbooks, or what kind of type are you? Oh, have you seen Chris' episode? I don't know. Um, I probably have. It, it I was the really yeah, it was a, it was a, it was <laughs> uh, what three weeks ago or so? Wait, uh, he has like millions of thumbnail sketches that he's done very meticulously oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in his notebooks. Are you this kind of person, or okay. you just scribbled? It? Um. I'm a bit of both. I do start off really, really rough. So I have like really bad scribbles. I can show you. Sure. Um, I have one of my notebooks right here. That's always. Yeah. Like they're like, <laughs> they're in dis- like you can't tell what, what it is. Right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you see what I mean? You can't tell what it is. <laughs> I can, but. No one else can. I mean, it's it's but at the end just, of the day, it's for you. <laughs> yeah, but obviously, um, when it gets to the next stage, or if I start like the actual line work before the final bit, mm. then it becomes like much tighter and um, more uh, detailed. Mm. And uh, how did you start out? Like, when when was the point, or what, or what was the occasion, maybe even uh, when you made your actual first film poster? Um, so I, I think it all started when I basically, I got made redundant, um, from my first full-time job outside of uni, Mm. which is what pushed me to become freelance. Mm. And I was basically just paint. I was painting, I was, um, drawing digitally. I was doing all sorts and basically just trying to get loads of stuff, new work created basically. So I was pushing out loads of, um, portraits Mm -hmm. and I came across this social media uh, challenge Mm -hmm. um, on Instagram which was called Filmtober Mm -hmm. and someone I followed was doing that challenge and like trying to get other people to do it so I did that so I like every day was creating like a little illustration Mm -hmm. inspired by different films that I liked so that was Mulholland Drive that one Mm -hmm. Um, so I was doing like little film studies as well as other more portraits and then that I think that was the click where I was like oh I'm really, really enjoying like interpreting some of my favorite shows and films mm. with in my paintings. Um, and then I came across some film posters and I think the first artist I came across was Freya Betts. Mm, of course, Freya. He obviously has, yeah, <laughs> obviously has like quite a similar painterly style to me. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think I, I found a tutorial of hers yeah, and that's okay. when I created like uh, my first poster. I see. Yeah. And the first poster was then what? A portrait of a lady on uh, fire was like my official, like first attempt. So even though that's my first like official, um, alternative movie poster, mm-hmm. it seems to be still quite light. Mm-hmm. I was quite, I was anticipating for like my first try to, to not be so not to be popular basically <laughs> but it seems people still like it which is nice yeah i mean it's uh it uh, captures the movie in some quite a sense very well and uh um obviously portrait of a lady on fire is a great movie so uh mm. if you interpret it at least halfway good yeah i think you're good because uh, this movie is well liked <laughs> and the artwork is uh, even better in my opinion than the movie uh and Thank you. Uh, yeah so great <laughs> job on that for the for the first one Thank you. um would you still do the same for this one did, did you did you do you think sometimes of coming back to uh, certain posters and say like okay now i know what's up and uh, i would love to do this again um yeah, no, I definitely feel that way towards a lot of my posters and a lot of my work. What, and I think, what would happen yeah, here? I probably would. What would happen here for the portrait? Um, I'm not exactly sure what concept I go with, but oh. look, just looking at it now, it just, it does seem quite flat to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I, you've got me thinking about it now. <laughs> I, I probably will yeah, at some point have to like 
critique, rethinking, critiquing it. yourself is uh, <laughs> not always easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you also uh, turned in some other ones. I'm just going to show a couple here, like uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. I mean, this this is a yeah. glorious, uh, uh, I would say, a glorious Blu-ray cover <laughs> for the anniversary. Is it? Yeah, I think this this was like one of my first like uh, private commissions where someone, like an individual, mm -hmm. reached out and wanted a, a poster commission. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, 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 I don't know when... This would have been now at least three years ago. Yeah. Was that printed though? Um, probably by the individual. Like, ah, okay. It wasn't like a group private commission ah. though. It was just um an individual. Yeah. I see, and then we. Ha so it was in someone's home somewhere. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, people send in in the comments. Obviously, if the person is watching, please send in a uh, photo of that <laughs> hanging up the wall. We have this Midsummer piece, which definitely looks like it has been part of the official key art. So, hey. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really dislike this one now. You actually. do? Why, though? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's very symmetrical. I think though. I might I have think, been a bit lazy. I feel, yeah, I, feel, I, feel, I feel at ease with this one. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, I think um, the concept could have been like, it's not a bad concept, but I think I could have executed it better. Mm. But maybe that's another one to add to the list of um, once I revisit. I see, I see. And then we have Moonlight, which is, uh, this is, this uh, seems more like you replicated this in an in, in artsy style. Is that like, because the, the original posters yeah. are like that? Is that what you did here? Or? Uh, yeah, I think that's how, 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 what I did when I first started out. Because I, I think I did a lot of just straight up portraits or straight up scenes mm. from films rather than coming up with my own concepts like oh. I do now so yeah it's it's nice to look back now to see how far I've like <laughs> come from where, yes. where I started you, yeah, out you can pat yourself yeah. on the back it's uh, it's perfectly <laughs> fine that's also the, this one this is also the original one right uh, the, the, from the original key art they had or to see it so familiar yeah I think I think um it is similar. Mm. Um, I think I created it like before realizing that, but um, mm. probably should have done a bit more research. I see. But yeah, I still quite like this one. I like the way I painted it. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's, uh, swift a little bit away from um, the poster stuff. But uh, what is some, some stuff that you've seen on TV or on the big screen lately? Is there anything you want to shout out? This is the stuff you have to watch. I'm going to make a poster for that or something. <laughs> Um, well, I just recently came back from watching, uh, I'm going to butcher the name because I keep forgetting how, what was it? Killers of a... Killers of the Flower Moon? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Let's hear your thoughts on that it. That was really good. Garvin and I were talking about it. I really it. liked it. You, okay. Okay. You, you gotta, you gotta see, I'm, I'm. <laughs> I'm feeling uh, I am and uh, uh, my co my colleague I do the German podcast with uh, and mm. only a couple others are uh, um, uh, are in like thoughts of what's going on with this movie. So please try to convince me. What's what's your take on this one? Um, I was a, I went to see it in the cinema and mm. I I got to say I was a bit numb by the end of it. Like I I was expecting. The, the cinema said there was going to be an interval mm -hmm. in the middle, and there wasn't. <laughs> I maybe would have liked that. <laughs> Three and a half hours. Because it is quite a long yeah. one. Yeah. But I, no, I did really enjoy it. I, I thought that um, Lily Gladstone was mm. um, amazing. And I did actually like um, Leonardo DiCaprio's performance as well. Um, that man doesn't age. <laughs> oh, I think in this one, I, I don't know if it's the makeup. He looks, he looks very worn. <laughs> I, th I thought it this one especially with the with the fake teeth and stuff it's like oh yeah 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 that was really weird it, <laughs> it gave me a little bit of uh, the, the the godfather Marlon Brando feeling mm. like the potatoes in the mouth <laughs> yeah but yeah no I, I overall I, it was I think um, it felt a bit slow to begin with um, but when it picked up I have to say I, the the first the first hour I really enjoyed. Okay. But then it's like 
Oh, I mean, uh, technically, you know what's going to happen, even without yeah. knowing about the book. But I was interested in the Osage world. I wanted to know mm. more about this. Why is there the regulations? Why is it like I, I found it interesting to see the, the perspective change, white people doing all the servant jobs and uh, Native American people doing the uh, are, are the, the rich people in this case. And I, I think that was all really interesting. And then it was like, but the, the, the next... Uh, Two and a half hours, it was uh, white people doing bad things, which I have seen way too many times. And I'm a little bit um, annoyed with this. I understand it from the perspective of looking at all of Scorsese's work, doing like showing American crime in all its facets. But uh, without that point of view, I find it sad. Why didn't he take somebody in? Uh, to write the script from from the Osage Nation. Why was there no uh, uh, um, director of photography or something like that that could help with different viewpoints? Because I understand Martin Scorsese cannot portray Native American people uh, because he isn't he's not Native American. Um, but mm. why not put that in the middle? Why do we see another point of view of like white people treating uh, minorities bad? Yeah, no, I do see your point. <laughs> Um, I wonder how long that film would have been if they'd went with that approach. Do you think that it probably would have been I think, even longer? No, I don't think so. I, I, I think it just needs the camera change. For example, uh, spoiler alert again, I, saw, I said that also on Garvin, uh, in a podcast with Garvin, because he had also the same opinion <laughs> as you did. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so, yeah, so that's this, the, the point when the, the, his child dies, the young one, right? We see Lily Gladstone just basically for a second morning. And then we cut to Leonardo DiCaprio theater school, uh, how to show a scene morning for like what, a minute or a minute and a half or whatever. And it's like crazy. It's like, why, why are we not seeing the mother who's actually in pain here, who has born this child, you know? And uh, uh, this is this this is what I question, like all these perspective changes, you know? And I, I, I know white people have been very bad. <laughs> Why do we need to see the white people doing bad things again? And this, yeah. and this is what like takes me off this movie a, a lot. And um, yeah, wasn't, wasn't a fan, wasn't a fan. That's fair enough. I think um, maybe the focus on like Leonardo instead of mm -hmm. um, her, Maybe that's done, I don't know, maybe it's done for effect to, like, show how they've been oppressed. Mm. Possibly, but I don't know. Yeah, it is, it is, it is wild. It's, it's a, a, obviously a very wide perspective, mostly, and I think that was, uh, uh, yeah, people can say, oh, this is all woke, blah, 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 and stuff like that, but mm. uh, have we not seen this perspective for too many years, and I think there's a lot of uh, Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro playing in that most of the audience like it because they have this kind of standing and like who who is to say anything against Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro. And this is my problem. I understand they work well together and that's fine with me. Do it. Um, I totally understand it. But uh, I really love the, the explanation at the end of the, of the, uh, of the thing with the, with the, the podcast kind of uh, um, idea there, but um, that is it is it is hard to hard to see the way it was done, and uh, then uh, for for seeing all of this uh, the crime to put it in the middle, I don't need three and a half hours to understand what's happening. I don't know if yeah. if, if, if I don't want to say I have ADHD or something like that that I cannot pay attention <laughs> for that long, but like I don't know. Oh, it's, a, it's a long. It's a, it was a long film. You know, there's not many that. Well, not, not that I've seen recently. But, but I'm Indian. Reached over three hours. I'm Indian cinema trained, so there's a lot of three hour movies. <laughs> and uh, also, also like I don't know, I'm a big fan of Kurosawa movies, and they are also most of the time very long, and there's a lot of slow pacing going on, and I like that. So I, I, I thought, was was it me who was like I don't know, don't understand this, but as it was clear cut and there were no surprises, I think that's what kind of mm -hmm. got to me with the length because. Yeah, I don't need to. Sh you don't need to show me the tenth round of her giving the insulin uh, to help mm. me understand what is actually <laughs> happening. So it's like, mm. don't sell me as stupid. That's that's my point here. 
But yeah, so uh, sorry that I maybe <laughs> made the movie bad for you. <laughs> I'm giving you my perspective. No, no, no. I, I can I can respect your your point, and I, no, I can I can agree. Okay, okay. And other, any other things you've seen? Um, I was trying to get into the spooky spirit for Halloween. I watched Us because I hadn't watched oh, it. Okay, so. and how was that? Yeah, no, I enjoyed it, but uh, better or worse than Get Out? Um, get Out. It still stands out. To on top i think still nope is my my lowest ranked i think it's get out yeah i i watched that recently as well and then um, i wanted to like it um but yeah it just didn't it didn't do it for me understand but yeah get out is definitely i want to watch it again see but this, this is this is, so is what good. i liked you know they in, in these kind of movies compared to kills of the flower moon um not everything is clear cut and you have to actually think, and I enjoy that, obviously. Uh, like, that movie works within me, and I can work with the movie and stuff like that. So um, this is really nice. So uh, these kind of movies are, in my opinion, higher ranked than uh, yeah. maybe Kills of the Flower Moon for me. But yeah, um, is there anything you're looking forward to? Like, anything you like, oh, this is coming out, I'm so excited. Oh, um, I'm a bit, like, behind on new films. So I feel like... Uh, most of these are already out. You can also say TV. But if you want I, to. oh yeah, oh, see, there's there's too much to watch. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. But, but I need to. I'm like behind on TV shows as well, actually. I, I just... But film wise, I need to see the creator. I need to see um, poor things, mm -hmm. as well as past lives. Mm -hmm. Those are like the three that I I really want to see. Right. Some uh, good choices, and I am not gonna say anything about the creator here then. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, please, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it's not spoilers. It's just, uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, just uh, close your ears, just watch. But, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, because I, I just checked yesterday because I, I think I watched 375 movies or like limited series this year, so it was, it was already a lot. Oh, wow, but I, uh, I still want to get to th 360. A five this year so i need to i need to do, do some catching up in the last uh, two months so <laughs> let's see if i can make that but yeah um so uh speaking of stuff you enjoyed uh, lately are there any uh, posters uh, that you loved um so it's not actually she said it wasn't actually a poster it's more like a tribute to um mm -hmm. Molly, was it Molly? Molly, yeah, Molly. I don't, Molly, I don't yeah. forget her name. From um, yeah, from Killers of the Flower yeah. Moon. That tribute piece is beautiful. Yeah, it's by Love that. Laura Raquero, Racero, Raquero. Huh? I yeah, I, I, I'm glad you pronounced when <laughs> <laughs> pronounced <laughs> it because I was gonna struggle as well. <laughs> yeah, really love this piece. I think it's beautiful yeah she has done another um, one like a couple of weeks back for it was for oppenheimer that was amazing so yeah she i don't know if i've seen that i think she did but i'm not i'm not 100 sure but uh there was some some other one that was really great uh also mm -hmm. seen that in, in that kind of style then people were like oh laura's back so that's good to see but and then yeah <laughs> turned out some nice ones yeah yeah um and another good one that i've seen well I, I love all of his works and I think he's just released um, or shared some new work. Yeah, Star again, Wars, Star Wars recently. one, right? But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chris Valentine. Chris Valentine. He's a good guy. Because he paints them all in oil paints as well. It's yes. just incredible. <laughs> yeah, go go check out Chris. Uh, he's been on the podcast as well. You can check him out. Also, as uh, Freya has been, one of the early ones that was basically. Uh, Kind of like H Hannah now a, a little bit in the game starting uh, st kind of starting out and Freya <laughs> was starting out back then and at the beginning of the podcast I think fourth fourth or fifth episode or something like that she was on so mm. that was uh, mm -hmm. a nice while back but yeah uh, yeah these are some uh, amazing posters I really uh, love to uh, love your choices here yeah no I think it's brilliant um and I think this one is still I think available. a bit nostalgic to it as well. Is it? Yeah, Celador, I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but Celador Gallery. Uh, they are uh, uh, one of the smaller, newer ones, uh, gallery-wise. They had a Juan Ramos Terminator came out, and now uh, this wonderful S uh, Zorro work. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, if uh, there might the chance, uh, there's the chance that you might get a poster from them. 
Yeah. You want to say some more? I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Just wanted to promote it. a little guy. <laughs> I was just going to say, it makes me feel nostalgic because um, I remember watching this film growing up when I was younger. Um, I used to quite enjoy Zorro. Yeah, it was good times, but uh, I don't want to revisit that movie. I'm scared it's not going to hold up. No, I, yeah, I'm not. There's some films that you just don't want to do that because it's just not worth it, is it? Because you just want to hold that memory yeah, yeah, yeah. and ruin it for yourself. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But some some films though, you go back to and you watch them, and you they actually surprise you. Like Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. I went back to watch that, and I still really enjoyed it. I was actually like really pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah, I had like I mean, even with like Blade Runner, like you know, it's a, it's a classic, it's a classic movie. But there's this one scene where he forces the main character to do stuff she doesn't want. And it's like, oh, please don't. And it's like, if, if you kind of like in this modern world and like not stuck in a patriarchy world, uh, then you should be okay. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's tough to see sometimes. So it's hard to watch. But anyways, yeah. uh, is there anything you would like to see from other artists? Um, like, uh, like, I don't know, the Chris Valentine tackle uh, Finding Nemo or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm always happy to see more Twin Peaks art. Right. Big twin I don't think there's it. enough. Yeah, there's not enough of it. That's why I like. That's why I like. I'm making my own because mm -hmm. there's just there's not enough. We need more. Grab, did you did you grab the series by uh, Greg uh, Greg Ruth? He has uh, he has done the twin the super big twin oh, piece uh, set. It's amazing. It is. <laughs> yeah, I've I've spent quite a long time looking at his website, just going through all those images because mm -hmm. they yeah they're beautiful. Just some of the like simpler ones as well that are just standalone, mm. like cropped close up portraits are just, yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. Insane. All righty. Um, then let's talk about uh, um, uh, not other people's work, more your work and particularly your workspace. I mean, uh, this is always <laughs> interesting to see how people work at home. Um, I, I've people have seen my my monitor set up here. It's like feels like really big, but uh, hey, it, it does the trick for this recording uh, for these recordings. And uh, yeah, you also have um, these uh, images uh, that you gave us and yeah this this is how you work uh you talk about it i'll show some other angles and stuff and uh, what do we see here and uh, this is what like a you, your own house or what, what what's all about um so i currently live with um my family i live with my mum mm -hmm. my mum's partner and my grandma so there's quite a few of us here mm -hmm. um moved back home after covid happened mm -hmm. but i'm very very um grateful and privileged as well because I get to have my own workspace um is this is called the secret room so when my mum moved in here she didn't know they had a a room in the loft basically uh -huh. so it's the secret room so it's now my little studio space yeah so I'm very lucky is it but yeah I've got my desk set up here is it always that clean um, by the way me. or <laughs> I mean that's a fair question I did, give it a, I did well it, it varies it if I'm in the middle of a project, it's like it looks like a bomb's gone off. Okay. But um, I did clean it and make it look tidy for the photos. Oh, okay, okay. The, I mean, it looks it looks amazing. It looks very inviting and very uh, nice to look at. I mean, I would love to work there. I got but, loads of plants behind me as well. Yeah, that's coming up in a second here. So yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> I mean, as you can already see on uh, on the office desk, so many uh, so many yeah. plants. Do, do, is, is there enough light? Because it feels like a little, because you can see only the light there in the back. Is, is it enough light for the plants? Yeah. Um, so I've like, I've had to be quite careful with like which plants are up here. Mm. So the more hardy plants that can tolerate low light are up here. But I've got one beside my desk that is looking a bit um, sad. Oh. So I might have to move that one. Because mm. yeah, it does get a bit dark. That's why I've got like this light now in the corner. Mm to light up my desk space because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only got the one window. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you've got some monsteras up there. Like that's my, one of my favorite plants. <laughs> yeah. It's so jungly, right? It's, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I recently like adopted another one oh, um, and it's massive. It's they, in my, they, in my bedroom. But they're spreading so fast, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> they just, just keep growing. So you can't, I can't repot them anymore because yeah. if you keep like, changing the pots they just grow bigger and bigger exactly exactly so i've just had to like 
keep them it's crazy the same. like I have another friend of mine uh, she has uh, the Chinese money plant like millions mm. of them because like, they're growing so fast and so crazy it's that's also very nice to have though yeah no I love my plants yeah, you got a, you got a favorite <laughs> plant is Monstera also your favorite plant or um yeah I think it is yeah it's got to be the Monstera yeah, I mean there are different kinds. Uh, I I also like the the one with the white and like the the, the whitish leaves. Oh you know, yeah. But like like cow spots, you know what I mean? Yeah, like the, I think they're like more much more rare, aren't they? Yeah. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, I know what I know. What I have mean. I have a fake one in in the in in, in my <laughs> bathroom because like in the bathroom there's uh I mean there's no window it's a windowless mm -hmm. bathroom and uh, um yeah that is always like you know uh. Uh, I I I, uh, I need some plants and there's some green and it looks really nice, but it's the fake one from IKEA. <laughs> yeah. So, but that stays always the same. And I, I have like I don't know. It was a couple of weeks back. I've seen actually one to buy, but I was like, oh shit, shoot, I don't have them. How much was it? It was expensive. It was very expensive. It was, oh, it was yeah. a big one as well, and I think it was like around hundred euros. So it was yeah. like very expensive. I'm not surprised. Yeah. But hey, here we are. <laughs> at some point, at some point, there will be a uh, uh, this kind of monstera because I really love it a lot. It just has to get a baby one and like yeah, 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 yeah. let it grow. That that yeah, but I would be scared maybe that yeah, something happens. It would be but, hey, heartbreaking if it dies. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of plants. So do, do you draw inspiration from plants, or is it just to make you feel comfortable, or is it? Um, I think it's just it just feels makes me happy. Mm -hmm. To have them around me, um, it just adds life yeah. How to a space, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, I don't tend to draw them. I, the only time I draw on plants yeah. is in that um, self-portrait I did for Eileen's on the sheet. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering how how often do you draw plants? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not very often. <laughs> okay, somebody needs uh, needs to get you on a, a predator a predator piece or something. <laughs> lots of monsteras to draw there. <laughs> yeah, lots of monsteras, lots of foliage. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, so um, this is uh, where you're working. And now I was wondering, how, how are you working? What is like, what is your process on the things? And uh, uh, to maybe what are you working on right now? Um, so for my process, um, I've cur currently like making a little shift in my process and basically doing some of my line work obviously depending on how much time I have for a project starting the line work traditionally mm -hmm. pencil and paper um because I feel like it just gives it a complete different quality for me personally I feel like I'm much more freer with how I'm drawing and it looks more organic if that makes any 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 sense yeah. <laughs> than doing it digitally um but then from then on I just take it onto my Wacom and Cintiq or my iPad and work digitally mm -hmm. um for the rest of it for coloring and rendering um but starting out it's always like very rough thumbnails like you saw earlier mm. like um pencil and paper for just getting out ideas because i end up doing it a ton because i try to get the bad ideas out first mm. so i can get some decent ones out um project wise i've just wrapped up a few like bigger client projects mm. with my agent jelly which is really exciting I can't share anything yet because they're not live, mm. but I'm hoping that I'll have some dates soon and I'll be able to share those because those were a lot of fun. Can you say what what it is for at least, like the, um, the project? Not but not poster related. Okay. Um, brand, it's brand related, I guess. Brand related, it's exciting. It's like okay. on a bigger scale. What are we? What are we? Sports. Exciting. Um. No, I'm not going to say okay, anymore. Okay, okay. We, don't, we don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> I, I tried, though. I tried. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've got one more um, artwork coming out uh, that was done with the Post Posse that's going to be released at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and in the background, I'm currently working on some Blu-ray covers, my first ever Blu-ray covers. Is that what you also sent through as a work in progress? Yeah. Okay. So these are very tiny because... Um, yeah. I can't, I can't really share anything, so of course, you can know how it is. make of these what you will. <laughs> okay, I was I was saying these are Blu-ray covers. You said yeah. Okay, because the first of all, I was saying oh, this, these colors look very Mandalorian. 
<laughs> uh, so I thought it's Mandalorian, but I guess not. And then we have uh, this one as well here. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> this is yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing I yeah. can make out. <laughs> no, I know. I was I was trying to like take the different um, snippets from the piece mm-hmm. without it giving away too much. So. This is what you got. <laughs> okay, people, uh, get your guesses in in the comments. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, uh, we'll we'll get the right one. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Exactly. <laughs> All right. And uh, what is something you actually would love to work on in the future? Is this something I don't know? You want to do uh, editorial? Do you want to do uh, fashion design? What, what, what do you want to mm-hmm. work on? Um. It's funny you should say fashion design because uh, before before I did um, illustration, I actually thought I wanted to be a fashion designer there you go. and then realized I, c- I couldn't make clothes and I was only really good at drawing them. So I thought, oh, what about fashion illustration? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then realized, oh, I might as well just do illustration. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, work-wise for the future, I definitely want to like continue my Twin Peaks portraits because that's been put on hold due to having too much other like mm-hmm. client work because my Twin Peaks ones are personal pieces. And That's, so I want to get back into those. That one already you posted, right? Yeah. All right. And then. So I've got three out three so out, okay. far. Four, four if you include my oil painting. I didn't send that one to mm. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really want to do some more of those because I'm trying to get through the whole of the cast of Twin Peaks. <laughs> There's quite a few of them. So. Yeah, I want to do some more of that. I also want to um, try and work some more surreal elements into my work because I obviously work very, like, representational. Um, so I've started doing that a little bit with my Alice piece, mm. which I sent you. Um, yes, so that's the rework from the from the first one, yeah? We've, we've seen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this was actually inspired by the book rather than mm-hmm. the film because I wanted to basically – create my own interpretation of the story rather than relying on images that were already created or like films that were already created based on the story. Mm. So it's, it's yeah. this, uh, doesn't, doesn't James Albert Murad have the, um, have the book license for that? Um, so he has a literature co- um, yeah. collection at Mora. I've actually just done a release for Dracula oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with Mora. Um, but no, I haven't, done anything with this piece just yet okay yeah but james maybe yeah, yeah. james is probably james is probably <laughs> watching anyway so uh yeah yeah he, he he will probably let you know book wise if that is an option that's the variant as mm-hmm. well really nice really well done love the trends thank you i'm really happy with love these. the translucent the translucentness of the of the dress kind of there yeah the bottom. that's really thank nice you. it was a lot of fun to paint this one yeah uh, even like like the wings give me a batman vibe though <laughs> like the logo well, with the Dracula and bats. Yeah, yeah, so hey, yeah. it's not too far off. No, that's true. That mm-hmm. is true. Yeah, but yeah, really nice pieces. Uh, so yeah, maybe Thank James you. is gonna make the Alice in Wonderland work. Uh, yeah, it looks Never really know. amazing. Thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, some other recent work you've done, and not only this one. Uh, you've this. Uh, you've done this wonderful uh, Ahsoka piece. But this was with the poster posse for the Disney socials, right? And yeah, uh, yeah, these yeah. these two lovely people. How did you how do you like the show and how do you like them? Um, I loved the show. I I I went and watched it without watching um, Clone Wars and Rebels, which I kind of regret. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. W- I watched a catch up, so I was like in the loop in the know of what was going on. Um, but I still really enjoyed it without having to have watched those mm-hmm. those two series. I loved it. Yeah, I made uh, made my girlfriend watch the the most important uh, episode, uh, the ab- most mm-hmm. important episodes of of each, so she understands it. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, yeah, it, it helped. I mean, there's there's some good uh, some some good storylines. Like, uh, uh, um, I think there was even an episode guide, kind of like just if you want to know Ahsoka, you got to watch this, 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 and that. Yeah. And then, yeah. So we just did that real quick. But yeah, and uh, you also turned out this wonderful Loki piece, which is uh, so Art Deco inspired. And uh, 
Yeah, I, I just been to the Alphonse Mucha exhibition in Prague, and which, oh, which was very lovely. And uh, yeah, oh, nice. this one seems very. <laughs> I was like, as I as I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, this uh, reminds me of something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you thought that. That's good. That's what good. That's good to know. Yeah, that's what you were yeah, going for. Yeah, this is fun as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. This is heavily, heavily Art Nouveau. Um, Alphonse Mucha, so yeah. Yeah, and uh, by the way, if people, if you ever go to Prague, uh, this is a very lovely exhibition. And uh, poster-wise, if you're a poster fan, you've got your heart cut out uh, for you uh, there, <laughs> and it's like this is what's up. Also, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm doing little plugs here. Uh, in Berlin right now, there's a very wonderful uh, um, a poster exhibition. It's called The Big Screen. It is a a poster show of oh, it's like starting from 1905. That's the first actual poster they have uh, from 1905 nice. movie poster to 2023. All like all through the years, every uh, every year's movie poster, we have 300 movie posters in that exhibition. Uh, oh, wow. All originals and uh, even our uh, good old uh, alternative movie poster world is uh, set up there. Uh, Muragaya has one and I think nice. Lakyat has one as well. Uh, that is, has been set up there uh, as originals. And technically, James Jean also has one because they were asking for the key art James Jean version, but uh, he did mm. he did send out one of his uh, G. Clay em, uh, embossed prints, so nice. <laughs> which is really cool. So. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so some really cool stuff. And then they have a digital monitor where they talk about alternative movie posters as well. So it's really cool, really cool. Uh, that they included that because, uh, um, because I kind of made them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so it's really nice. Uh, and it's definitely a worthwhile exhibition if you're in Berlin. Go check it out. It's until March next year. So you coming or what, Hannah? <laughs> it sounds good. I have to look into it. Awesome. <laughs> You know, it's nice to hear that the, there's like more stuff being shown for alternative movie posters, especially in like in museum spaces and mm -hmm. ex ex the other exhibits. Exactly, so that is, that's nice. The, nice the actual poster ones, the printed ones, for example, Morgaya's screen printed one uh, for June. Um, that is actually uh, because like they offered because they could they had only a certain budget to buy posters, obviously. And they had a very, the, the heart of the, their collection is like the 1950s movie poster, but they also have like, I don't know, Czech posters and all of that. So there's some really cool stuff. If, by the way, people, if and this come, uh, should, should not, should, should be gone by then, but uh, Hannah, you can watch it right, right now. I, I just put it up some, some images from yesterday when I, when I went there. Um, but yeah, so some really, really nice posters out there for your fans and like, I think it is inspirational to see actually uh, what kind of stuff came out. I mean, the posters from the 1920s, phew, there's some amazing ones in there. It was like, I was like, <laughs> oh my God, this, somebody needs to pick up. There's, there's actually from a Napoleon film from the 1910s or whatever that, whenever, whenever that was. And uh, they, uh, this one could have been, would have been perfect also for the new one. So it's like, <laughs> they need to re. Oh, that sounds that. amazing. Yeah. Um, what also sounds amazing is probably your answer for this question. Uh, which <laughs> fine artist would you like to see make a movie poster and what movie would it be? So my favorite, um, one of my favorite painters, oil painters, is John Singer Sargent. Mm. So that's, it's going to have to be John Singer Sargent. Okay. And okay. the first film, the first film I came straight to my mind mm -hmm. when like matching was Barry Lyndon. Mm-hmm. Want to so, add something or um, sometimes, well, sometimes it, just, I it just seemed like the best match. Okay, yeah. Like, so, sometimes I, I feel like I've... you're still thinking, so I, <laughs> I gave you the break. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I didn't know if you were finished. <laughs> yeah, no. When I watched Barry Lyndon, I, I like some the majority of the scenes and the stills look like paintings to me. Mm. So yeah, it just seemed like a good match. So what would, would you put in the movie poster? Um. It would be the focal point then. I think it would have to be like a landscape scene, but with um, I've, I've forgotten her name. I'm embarrassed. Um, Barry Lyndon's wife. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten her name, but I think she would be in there because I feel like her, her painted in like a John Singer Sargent style would be. Was it Lady really nice. Lady Berenson? That's it. Yeah. 
Uh, nee, I'm, I'm sorry. Lady uh, Honoria, that's her name. Played oh. by Marissa Barrington. <laughs> But yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay, I see, I see, okay, okay. So, that's something you do for the book, then? Volume two? You're in or not? Well, it, if, <laughs> if you'll have me, yes, because I was, I was gutted to have missed the first one. So, yeah, if there's a volume two. It is, it is happening, people. Yes, please. Is, uh, we are behind the scenes, we're working on it, so <gasps> it, uh, it might be happening. Yes, please. <laughs> well, count me in if you have me. Awesome, of course, of course. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so obviously this is one of my last questions so uh it's your turn now uh you can do shout out to your friends artists family tell where people can find you do any plugs you want this is your time just uh, do do whatever you want okay amazing um i'm gonna shout out um james our good friend from more art go check out more art gallery not just my work at more art but all of the good stuff that's going on there (laughs) Um, this is beautiful. Did you like the Sleepy Hollow piece that came out? Yes, that was really nice, right? I loved it. I hadn't seen it until they went live. Mm-hmm. But I thought that this is like plugging my own work as well. <laughs> it's but fine. You can do that. <laughs> Dracula with Sleepy Hollow, the two of them next to each other, I thought it looks really good. Mm-hmm. So people could buy both. <laughs> do it, people. Do it. Um, also like to shout out uh, Neda. Um, George, aka Ralston, and Eileen SG posters because they're just just all round amazing people and very supportive of my work. And I think you should go check them out. Do it, people! Great people. Uh, a lot of been uh, have been on the show, uh, and some of them will be in the near future. So you better check them out because uh, they do great work, and they are just uh, even more wonderful people than their work is. Yeah, I feel like I could have like a really long list of people to shout out but are those are this is the core gonna have to be this is the core guys. yeah it's fine um you can find me at hannah gillingham um if you search hannah gillingham across social media you'll find me um got the double m though on on instagram right oh yeah i was i was like yeah, double it, m no when you search hannah gillingham yeah, it, it, comes it comes up, up. doesn't it so it's yeah right. i was i was just because work- <laughs> i because I, I put always up the the the, the at for instagram so yeah but i was like i was wondering huh and then i was uh checking the website earlier as well there was only one m I was like hmm yeah it's because um hannah gillingham with one m was already taken mm. so that was a shame fair enough but <laughs> we may do yes yeah uh yeah and your and your then, website and your store your yeah store? website is hannah gillingham dot com mm-hmm. um you can find my website um sorry you can find my online store through my website um and yeah check out my recent dracula print from more art gallery because that's only only got released on halloween so just a few days ago so exactly people go yeah. check it out there should be some uh there will be ap's though hannah or it will be yeah okay i um, can't say when they're coming yet but there will be APs. So if you might miss out over at Murad, go definitely uh, check if for Hannah's drop and uh, all the other greatness. Uh, and if you might be able to grab it on Murad, go grab also Sleepy Hollow while you're there. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, Hannah, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. I hope you also had a great time and uh, you uh, we, uh, we will obviously enjoy your work in the future. And uh, book-wise, we keep you updated and uh, we'll talk to you all soon, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.